Okay, you have a DC-17 animal by Dyson. Fantastic vacuum cleaner. And your canister is spotlessly clean. And there's no dirt anywhere. And you've cleaned all the accessible filters. And guess what? It still doesn't suck. Well, that is a problem. Where your problem is, is up here in the cyclonic area. They have eight little hurricanes going on in here. And the debris that gets up in there goes down in these little venturis. And it's like an ice cream cone. That's the geometry inside. So any dirt that goes in there it has to go through these small ports on the bottom and it gets clogged and when it clogs up up top you can it doesn't matter how clear this is nothing's going to happen. So the first thing you got to do is naturally separate the canister from the head and then you have to take the head apart. And most of this unit is screwed together uh, with a Torx screw and they're all the same screw so when you start taking it apart you can just throw all the screws in a cup because they're exactly the same all the way through. I think there's 14 of them on the inside of this particular unit. When this uncouples here because the top and the bottom this major perforated looking thing here this comes off. When it comes off there are three snap tabs inside of this unit that you have to muscle in order to get it to break loose. It's not a good idea to use a screwdriver and start trying to crack things because that's all you're going to end up with is a broken Dyson animal. And if you have one of these, you probably paid some pretty good money for it. All right, so I'm going to just set this up on a tripod. We're going to take this off. You've probably done it because so you have one. And I'm going to get down on the floor and I'm going to show you how to muscle this thing apart. And it's probably the most primitive step in this. But once you've got this thing taken apart, you are going to be very pleased with how much dirt you can get out of it. So sit tight. All right. Canister in the head, officially two pieces. Now we have to split this guy right along this ridge right here because inside this, I guess it's about two fingers by the time you get over there. Inside this area right here, there are snap clips inside of there holding the top to the bottom. And there's only one way that I've seen to do that, and that's to get down on the floor with it and go crazy on it. So let's do that. Okay, in order to successfully do this, you're going to want the front half of the unit up off the floor. So raise it up a little bit, find a happy spot, pinch it with your knees. And start pushing down on this. And this area up top is a silicone seal that's going to ultimately pop apart. So don't be afraid of it. Rotate it and look for an area where you get more movement than something else. There will be one. Now be firm. But patient. There are three clips inside that you have to overcome. And that's a good sign. Work your way around. Be patient. This is really takes a lot of strength to do this. These little clips on the side have absolutely no bearing on this thing coming apart. There you go. A little bit of twist back and forth and it will come apart. Now this has already been cleaned and I just disassembled it for demo purposes. 
but you can see there are three locking points on the inside and those are the ones that need to come apart. All right, from this point, let's start taking it apart. Once you've managed to wrestle your unit apart, you're going to find six screws in the bottom of this unit right here. These two screws on the outside and these two screws on this outside will separate this white unit, which is a two-piece unit, from the gray. Once this is apart, these two screws in the center will separate the two halves of the white unit and you can continue to clean. Once you have it broken down to this point right here, in order to separate the top from the bottom, down inside there are eight screws. Let me see if we can light them up so you can see them. See them down in there? Those are also T15 Torx screws. Take all eight of those out and separate the unit into three pieces. There'll be a bottom housing, there'll be a, some type of diffuser ring in here, large plastic part, and the lid itself. Take those screws out to, re, to re, uh, break this thing down. And believe me, getting them back in is not going to be a picnic. It's best served if you hold the unit sideways or slightly tilted and install the screws from the bottom up or they're going to continue to fall off your driver. You could also put tape on the driver if you want to or play-doh or clay or whatever to hold the screw on and just come straight down from the top. But that's how you take this apart. Okay, once you've removed all of the T15 Torx screws, visually inspect all your parts. Look at all the through holes because if there's a hole there, chances are it's supposed to be a through hole. And if it's clogged up, snake it out. Most of these plastic parts, I would say, are safe to clean with water. Make sure it's thoroughly dry before you put it back together or dust turns into mud and mud turns into concrete and that's not a good thing. Other mechanics will recommend not letting your main clear canister get to the point where it can start to cling and get inside places where it's not supposed to get inside of. All right, I'm going to clean this up real good and we will sequence these videos and show you exactly how this comes apart, how this goes back together and takes the scare out of it. Like I said, you're going to need a T15, that's T like Thomas, 15 Torx driver to do this. These are not Phillips head screws and do yourself a favor, don't try to use a Phillips head screwdriver on it because it's not going to work. And if it does work, it's going to tear up the screwdriver and the screw and then you really got a problem. All right, let's clean it up and I'll revisit. You can use a bottle brush, you can use a toothbrush, you can use compressed air, you can use another vacuum cleaner. Whatever you need to use to thoroughly clean your unit, do it because it's going to serve you well going forward. And you can see that this one is spotless. I am very pleased with how this came out. Bear in mind that a lot of the holes on the inside of this that make this thing work are small, very much like putting your finger over a garden hose to increase uh, velocity that's what they've done with the Dyson when you do clean these things out use toothbrushes this is a two-piece unit I'm sure this is a sonic welded unit because from a manufacturing standpoint it's got to be an insert uh, do not take this thing apart any farther than what you see right here you will probably damage it but right around the outside you can see that thin ring of uh, passageway right there that has to be clean so make sure these little holes are clean and any big clumps of stuff that are stuck down in there, tap on it, blow on it, put another vacuum on it, whatever you need to do, but make sure that this perimeter area is clean as well. And there you go. I mean, this is a pile of stuff, and this was actually inside of a Dyson unit that was supposed to be spotlessly clean, and it wasn't sucking anyway. So if your unit is not performing, this is where you got to go. All right, let's uh, start putting this thing back together. And we'll show you how easy it is. My first step in reassembly will be to assemble the sub assembly inside the unit. This is the one with the six holes. There's two in the center and two on the outside. Now this is an asymmetrical pattern, which means if you try to put it on one way and it doesn't look like it goes that way, well that was intentional. Swap it around until all the holes line up. For the first step, all you want to do is connect this body to this bottom. And that's done with the two inside screws, all right? 
So when you line up the two inside, make sure that the four on the outside also line up because those are the holes needed to secure this sub-assembly to the main housing. So let's screw that back together and take a look at it when it's done. It is relatively simple, but I can't do it while I'm holding the camera. Hang in there. Once you have the two screws installed that hold these two halves together, take a look at the outside holes. Make sure that the outside holes line up and that the seat between the two is nice and tight. When you put this on here initially before the screws, if you spin this ever so slightly, you'll feel it drop into a seat. And that's the place where you want it to be. You do not have to over torque these screws. This is a plastic assembly. So run them down until they just make contact, a little bit of snug, you're good to go. It's not like running a machine screw. And plastic will distort, so don't torque it up too much. All right, let's get to the other parts. Locate these next two pieces. Make sure that all these grooves are clean because that is a sealing area. The underside of this has the elevated lip that goes down in there. And you want to make sure that that fits in there nice and snug. This is domed as you can see. Convex, concave, depending on which side you're looking at. Make sure the correct side is down. These tips, they go down, so stick it on there. Gently move it back and forth until it falls into place and you'll feel it. It's not very loud, but it does fall into place. Make sure that there's no air gap on the outside and everything is seated properly. And this is when you grab this part. Now since I am holding this camera, this mechanism right here has a very specific track on the outside of the lower housing. As you spin it, now I know where it is, but I'm going to make sure that it sticks out like a sore thumb when it comes around. Okay, nothing here. This is where it's going to be, in here. Nothing, nothing. Boom, there it is. You want to make sure that you get this red part located back down in that track so that the whole thing goes together like it was planned. So ever so gently get that thing started in that track and slide it down in there. There you go. And if all goes well, the bottom tab goes back through this release hole and looks like this. Okay, nice and tight. You can look past it. See that little gap right there? Over by the glasses. Look through the purple at the glasses. That little white gap right there will close down when you pull the screws down. And I would recommend that when you seat the screws down in there, you can see the holes down the bottom. Don't clock one down all the way. Make sure you start them all first and then take them all down a little bit further and then take them all down a little bit further and pull this whole assembly down. Try to pull it down uniformly. That way it doesn't have a tendency to compress this gasket more on one side than the other. Make for a nice tight seal, give you much better vacuum power. When it is time to reassemble the previously assembled sub-assembly onto the main housing, you're going to notice that there's a little split in the ring down here. And there's a little protrusion on the bottom of the sub-assembly. Uh -huh. Make sure that when you feed one onto the other, that you align this rib right there with that split right there there are some sealing surfaces going on here so make sure that once it's lined up and seated that all eight of these venturis here pass through these openings and gently push the thing down until it seats against the standoffs that are going to hold it in place okay let's do that and show you what it looks like when it's done if you've installed the sub-assembly correctly, it is now seated as shown. And the four remaining screw holes will line up with the holes in the gray component on the top. Put the four screws in the outside. Snug them down. One of the other noteworthy features on the inside of this canister are three locking tabs. There's two on one side and one on the other. When the canister is correctly clocked to allow for all the mechanisms 
they will engage these little tabs. Right there, there's one. And on this side there should be two, which there is. So these are the little tabs that do all the work. This is what holds this unit together. And this silicone seal on top is just strictly to seal the whole unit once it uh, seats and snaps into place. So I'm not going to be able to hold the camera while I do this, but make sure that if you're going to put it on, that you have the two receivers in line with the two tabs and the canister release all lined up at the same time and gently snug it up until you hear the click. Okay, once you've successfully reassembled all the subcomponents onto the head, it is time to put this guy back onto here. And if there's any part of this process that you're going to want to throw this thing against the wall, this is it. The only thing that you need to be concerned with, well there are two things you need to be concerned with, is the alignment of the features that go with that. This basket has this guy on one side, this is the release for the canister, and this little two-step protrusion on the other side is the side that you need to line up with this. So when you put them back together, make sure that's the way that it goes. you can see why. You want that little red knob to go in the recess on that protrusion. Now on the head side, in this area right in here, all the way around, there is a silicone seal that has one side higher than the other. So it looks like a U shape, but one side is higher than the other. And on this unit, the high side is towards the inside. So you can see this is a flexible silicone seal right here. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. What you don't want to do is grab a hold of the low side and roll it into the channel. You want to make sure that this upper edge goes between that seal and seats right in there. Now you're going to have to give this some horsepower to get that back in there because naturally it's been a while since it's come out and the longer it's out I would think the harder it's going to be to get it back in. I do not know if this particular step is a good idea, but I'm going to put some waterproof silicone grease on this seal right here so that it slides real nice. And I'm going to put it right around the lip of this as well so that this slides past that silicone seal. I'm going to do it by hand. I'm not going to bang on it with a hammer. And I'm just going to hope for the best. So I'm going to actually sign off, do it, and when I come back on I'll let you know how long it took and how much difficulty I had doing it. Stay tuned.